of course, so many blessings um, in marriage, but think about the concept of marriage in general first before we talk about finding that soulmate. Marriage is bringing together not only two human beings, but it's bringing together two different genders. If you're a male and you've had mostly interactions with males in your life, suddenly you're going to be interacting about everything with a female. If you're a female, suddenly the person you get to collaborate with about everything is a male. It's bringing together two genders, not an easy task. It's bringing up two upbringings. It's bringing together two people from different upbringings. So do you think, sir, that you were raised differently than this nice sister over here with the mellow yellow? Do you think you were probably raised a little bit differently in your household? What are the odds that she'd be raised identically to you in the way that you were scolded, in the way that you were reprimanded, in the way that you were encouraged, in the way your parents dealt with you and interacted with you, in your goals, in your dreams? We're bringing together two completely different upbringings, a different set of values and a different set of things that we're accustomed to in our family. Maybe we ate completely differently, and I didn't mean to pick on you, sir or ma'am. Um, maybe we ate completely differently. Maybe our schedule at our house was that we ate dinner every night at 6, and that was dinner time, and that's when we ate. But you end up married to somebody that re they're ready for dinner at 10 o'clock at night. How cosmopolitan of them. But if you're that 6 o'clock eater, trust me, there's a little bit of issue. And certainly you're going to have to get together and find something to cooperate on. So it's tough. Two different upbringings as well. Two different families and their respective cultures. Whenever I see a sister and a brother from two completely different cultures, maybe, for example, um, my daughter raised with a, an American parent, and then maybe a brother who was raised by two parents from the same culture. Maybe they were Indo-Pakistani. I think about, boy, if you choose two different cultures for your marriage, you have a lot to overcome. You have to get used to that culture. You have to learn about it. You have to find what you respect about it. You have to find what you are willing to embrace and bring into your own thing. Islam isn't our only culture, as Dr. Lang was talking about earlier. We bring in other things into our cultures, and that definitely plays into the success of a marriage. So you have some stumbling blocks and challenges if you come from two different cultures, definitely. How about habits? When you marry, you marry that person's habits. Trust me. It is no, sm I mean, there's, the American television is ripe with, with commentary about leaving the lid up and leading, leaving the lid down, about, you know, putting the toilet paper roll on after they go the, if they use up the last of the toilet. All of those issues that are the everyday habits about belching, about the way that you wash your hands, about the way that you take everything, suddenly you're going to have to live in the same house with and get along with the way that person is. So everybody's habits are going to have to meld. Again, no small uh, challenge, this marriage in Islam. And also you're bringing together two bodies. We have to be somewhat compatibly, um, compatible physically, spiritually, and you're going to end up being soulmates for the rest of your life. So again, just to, to raise the bar here and have, have you understand what's on the line here. It's a big deal. That's why we get so many credits for and so many blessings for doing marriage right. Um, I brought the quote of Quran here that we've created you in pairs so that you can remember the grace of Allah and the great bounty of God. The wonderful blessings of God are recognized through marriage and certainly, even though it's a great challenge, so many blessings in marriage. Um, I would like you to read a little bit into this verse, verse. We created you in pairs, and the duality of creation is referred to in Quran over and over and over again. We're not created as single entities. We're not created as lone human beings that are supposed to go through our life isolated from society or isolated from other genders or isolated from our brothers and sisters. We are to be pairs. That's how we were created, in pairs. So very, very important in Islam that we talk about bringing together a pair that's going to work. And I know there's one seat up here. If somebody wants to take a chair so you don't have to stand, you're welcome to come on up. And you can commandeer these other chairs we're not using as well.